Writing a project independently is awesome, but when you open source it, more technologies and jargons are involved, including CICD, package bundlers, and everything becomes a bit daunting. In this video, I'm going to show you what I've been working on the last month, a React list wrapper component that I eventually open sourced. I will debrief on the component itself and then on to how I open sourced it, touching on semantic release, package.json entries, and explaining bundlers and GitHub workflows. I'm working on a productivity web app in which there is a to-do list. I want the list items to be dragged with reordering animations and swapping animations. I didn't find a library that can do both, so I decided to write one myself. Here's an example skeleton. Obviously, there is a list wrapper parent component and list items inside of it. Whatever is included in the list item can be swiped, and the list item in the same list can be reordered. Since not all of you watching are React enthusiasts, I will skip the implementation detail of the components. You can go look at the code in the repo link in the description. Uh, now I will make two small but complex enough components to demonstrate a workflow to open source. Once we have finished writing the code for React, we must convert React to ES5 JavaScript so that JavaScript is understood by all browsers. To do this, I use Babel with the React preset. And then I install the package bundler rollup. Inside the configuration file rollup.config.js, download and add a couple standard plugins. Additionally, download and add the Babel plugin. Now, if I only had a simple React file, Babel might be the only extra plugin that I need. Unfortunately, this is not the case. With the end goal of resolving all files of all types into a single file to resolve imports, I have got SCSS files that are currently not understood by the bundler. To resolve this, install the SAS plugin. Build the project and everything comes together in the dist folder as specified in the rollup.config.js. Now we can distribute the build files onto npm for others to use. Include a files key in package.json to specify that we want to publish the distribution folder. Link the GitHub repo the npm package is affiliated with. Now we can add a git ignore file. Push this code onto GitHub. And then we can add a tag and also push it to GitHub. Whenever we have a new commit, we will follow the workflow of pushing the code to GitHub, updating the GitHub tags, and then pushing the tags. Last, we update our package version with npm version major, minor, patch. I omit this time because we are only on package version 0.00. .00. Run npm publish. This is rejected because some other user has published a package named sample project. To resolve this naming conflict, I create what is called a scoped project by adding my name uh, in front of the package name. Finally, I run npm publish with an access flag of public because by default, scoped packages are published privately. Or we can automate this whole process. How about on push to the main branch? The GitHub tags and npm version will be updated accordingly to the commit message. And if an essential file is modified, then npm will publish the new package. Luckily, semantic release with GitHub Actions can help accomplish this. Install semantic release as dev and install its CLI globally. Calling semantic release will update the tags and versions in npm and GitHub, which means it obviously needs access to GitHub and npm through secret tokens. Set up the tokens by calling semantic release CLI setup. Now let's set up GitHub workflow in order to run semantic release on push to the main branch. First, specify which is the main branch. For some, uh, it is the master branch, but for me, it was the main branch. Uh, add this inside of a release resource.yaml file. Now make a folder called .github and inside of it, put a folder called .workflows. GitHub will automatically catch onto any YAML file inside of the workflows folder. Now let's make our YAML file. Write the trigger condition and write what occurs on trigger. npx semantic release requires two tokens, which can be both specified inside of the uh, environment variable. Additionally, before npx semantic releases, 
Because GitHub Actions are running on a cloud machine, I will need to call a few commands to set up our environment. And uh, if we do have a test script, we run npm test. Now let's add our changes and then commit them abiding the Angular commit convention, which is also what is a semantic release based on. Uh, and then we can push this bad boy to main. And if we go to our repo and then click on the actions tab, we can see the GitHub actions unfold. The commit message format is pretty strict and we can use a tool named Committizen to create these rule abiding commit messages. We will now install Committizen, make our repo Committizen friendly, and instead of running git commit, we run git cz. Go through the series of commands that it pops up, and when we run git log, we see that the commit message follows the semantic release commit format, also the Angular convention. Now you know the basics of open source. Again, on push, our GitHub action triggers. Inside of this action, we run mpx semantic release, which catches on to the conventional commit message to do all of the versioning and publishing work for us. And it has the authority to publish onto npm because we have set up the tokens using semantic release CLI set up earlier. We can now install our own library inside of our own sandbox and see our red div take its full effect. That'll be it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.